I am truly overwhelmed to be invited to a milestone event of one of the most important influences of my life, the University of the Philippines, my alma mater. Being one of the alumni uh, seeking to pay it forward for our countrymen and women, I want to offer solutions to the current problems of our society through my experience and knowledge as a student and as a city builder. It has been my life's commitment to derive inspiration from possibilities, from opportunities that can strengthen our dignity as a nation and provide an enabling environment for the future generation. Just a quick sharing lang po. Uh, I was, uh, when I entered the University of the Philippines, I was a bracket one STFAP scholar. Uh, I came from uh, the province. When I was asked for an ITR, I asked them, ano ba yung ITR? Because my family never really experienced filing an income tax. My, I was a, uh, my parents, uh, my father was unemployed, uh, and my mother was a seamstress. I was the first one to graduate uh, in college in my family. Dati ho sa amin, wala nakaka-graduate ng college. Um, and therefore, UP was a very special uh, uh, institution to me because uh, kung may model ho ng taking, uh, getting out of poverty, probably you could uh, make me as one of the uh, uh, one of the examples. And I would tell you that my when, when I graduated from UP, my other siblings followed, um, not necessarily from UP, but education eventually pulled us out of poverty. Um, so this invitation to speak before you is significant to me as it serves as recognition of what we in the BCDA have done for our country in the past 24 years. I am part of the team that built the Bonifacio Global City and one of the most beautiful master plan cities in Metro Manila. And now, the location of the new campus of the University of the Philippines. Uh, I was the one uh, uh, who uh, actually uh, signed the deed of donation for the UPBGC. And yes, there's a connection between Bonifacio Global City also and our national defense. Uh, BGC is in Fort Bonifacio, a former army camp under the stewardship of BCDA. And through po proper stewardship, BCDA and its partners paved the way for the rise of vibrant uh, urban districts. In fact, uh, when I was the first, uh, in my first year in UP, I was living in the slums of Fort Bonifacio. Sometimes life comes full circle. So in my office in BGC, I look uh, from the window and I could see the slums where I used to, to live. No? Until eventually, I got the chance to get admitted sa Nara Residence Hall. So yung mga taga Nara po dito, mabuhay kayo. So my roommate was then the lead guitarist of Eraserheads, si Marcus Adoro. And we'll, that was the time when they were composing yung Pareko and all these other uh, songs. So um, last March 28, we are happy to report that our work enabled us to remit a record high 4 billion pesos to the National Treasury for socioeconomic development projects and military modernization projects. Good governance is indeed not only good, but great economics. Since I became president and CEO of BCDA, we have remitted uh, at least uh, almost 13 billion cash uh, to the National Treasury. BCDA has never depended on or never depended on taxpayers' money because we are actually a net revenue generator for the government. Hindi po kami gumagastos ng buwis ng ating taong bayan. In fact, kami pa po ang nagdadagdag. We also constructed the 94-kilometer Subic-Clark Tarlac Expressway. So yung mga taga Central Luzon and Northern Luzon, you will probably experience the convenience and efficiency of uh, traveling through this toll road. This is the longest toll road that uh, in the Philippines at 94 kilometers. And we have uh, recently interconnected it, the first also in our country, to have an interconnected tollways, uh, NLEX and SETEX. So uh, it's a very, very uh, convenient and very fast travel time. Um, we also provided socialized housing to 3,000 informal settlers that you would see along the C5 road. Most of the apartment units there are socialized housing units, which we provided to our um, uh, people in uniform. We replicated military facilities also in honor of the service and sacrifice 
of BCDA's main stakeholder, the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Now we are building the Philippines' first green, global, and smart metropolis, the Clark Green City. And of course, what first came to my mind was to really bring the first UP campus in Central Luzon. And last April 11, we broke ground for Clark Green City in simple ceremonies at Kapa Starlak, witnessing the milestone our partners from the national and local government, the academy and the private sector, and is being led by President Aquino himself. And of course, we have the honor of having President Pascual join us in that uh, historic moment. Uh, this is significant in our history because for the first time in so many decades, we are master planning an entire metropolis. Uh, this is not a, a development uh, similar to the scale of Bonifacio Global City, but this is similar to the scale of Metro Manila itself. Uh, so uh, the entire Clark Green City is more than the size of Manhattan, uh, about 9,500 hectares. This would be the first metropolis that is a city in a farm, and a city with its own forest reserve and a lot of uh, green spaces. The world is urbanizing. More than 50% of the world's population are living in the cities. Uh, by 2030, 75% uh, of Filipinos will be living in the cities. This is the era of mega cities. We see challenges in food security, climate change, congestion, lack of shelter, and even terrorism. When I came from Batangas, uh, I first came to the slums because I could not afford the uh, other uh, housing facilities and accommodation in the city. I uh, worked in uh, Jollibee as a fast food crew, and uh, eventually, well, I was lucky enough to have the STFAP. Without the STFAP, I would probably not, uh, was not able to go to, to, uh, to college. Right now, one out of two Filipinos live in cities. By 2030, the number would have increased to three out of four. The question is, do our cities today have the capacity to sustain a gr growing urban population? Can people truly live with dignity in the urban spaces we have now? Clark Green City is the future of our metropolis. Green, smart, disaster resilient, and inclusive. We envision it with walkable spaces. We emphasize on inclusion because we believe that this is the way forward. Uh, many of our challenges in our societies are brought about by alienation of people. Uh, you see in Metro Manila, traffic congestion is also caused not only by the volume of vehicles that are happening, but if you look at the data, you will find that the gated communities actually also uh, encourages vehicles to concentrate simply on two major arteries of Metro Manila, C5 Road and EDSA. Yun lang ho, in between are gated communities and therefore the sharing of roads, uh, the vehicles could not be dissipated within the metropolis itself. Also, the pedestrian lanes, bike lanes are, are uh, non-existent, thereby uh, preventing people from walking from uh, and moving from one uh, point to another when in fact these distances could have been uh, uh, reached through walking and biking. Um, but at the same time, we envision uh, the city with the bike lanes, mass transport, and 75% green spaces. Uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, inspiration actually is uh, living in UP when I was in Nara because uh, I cannot afford the kasaa food. So doon lang kumakain kami kay Aling Lina and the Aristocart. Uh, I actually survived with a 100 pesos per week. Uh, Nara, uh, we, we only pay 175 pesos per month in Nara. Hindi ko pa mabayaran yun. Uh, I had to, uh, to secure a student loan to pay for the, uh, uh, for the rent in Nara. Uh, and then I have to survive on 100 pesos per, uh, per week because what I do, and most of us do actually, because ma many Nara residents, we all, we, most of us came from the provinces. So what we do, we, pay, we, we buy 3 pesos of uh, rice kay Aling Lina, sa Aristocart, and then we just ask for sabaw. So we survive by that and then we don't eat breakfast anymore. Uh, so because that would really, uh, again, uh, be a pressure on our pocket. Uh, to, to, to admit to you, I was afraid to have a girlfriend. Kasi baka magkailangan kong mag-date. Wala akong perang pan-date. 
So, we can see millions of people benefiting from things that BCDA have built and will build in the future. I would like to think that we in BCDA are re redefining city building. It's important to plan spaces, physical spaces, to uphold uh, human dignity and to uh, encourage inclusion, collaboration, uh, even you know, uh, encouraging compassion to people. As civil servants, we know that in every decision that we make, we have to be able to improve the lives of many Filipinos. We can empower them, we can build opportunities that can enable our countrymen to achieve their dreams. This we do through the selfless stewardship of our country's resources, the adherence to integrity and good governance, and commitment to business contracts with partners who have expertise in urban development. This journey in building Clark Green City has been successful through partnerships with organizations, particularly UP. We, we look at UP as the anchor for an innovation district. Uh, this would be an opportunity to bring about continued economic growth and lasting change to our society, to drive innovation, research, creativity, even for our artists um, and uh, those who are uh, into the creative business and industry. City building goes beyond towering buildings. The most modern technology, the best architecture, aesthetics. There is a certain depth to city building which is human. So we are planning to improve humanity. It should be something that is inclusive, sustainable, and disaster resilient. Something that sees and feels for the human being, giving respect to our capability to love, to live, to create, and to dream. This is a new Philippines. We should be dreaming the biggest dreams we could ever dream. This is our inspiration in city building. And for UP, it's really, really important to change our mindset so that uh, we will be uh, an educational institution that will be uh, an advocate for openness, for collaboration, uh, for partnerships, and even for equality. I believe that every human being should have a place to live. You know, when I was a student, I was living on the floor of a bake shop in the slums. I was romancing the rat and the cockroaches. My mat was a cigarette carton, yung carton na malaki ng cigarillo. Uh, uh, and uh, if I'm fortunate enough, I get, to, I get to sleep on the table where yung nagmamasa ng tinapay, no? Uh, uh, most often times, though, I will be on the floor. Therefore, I think it's important uh, that if we're living in that kind of squalor sometimes, uh, it tends to actually also limit our capability to hope and to dream. Education is the only way, I, I would say the only way really, that would allow minds to explore beyond the physical boundaries. When I first, uh, the first time I was able to use the library was when I was in high school. When I was in grade school, we had the library. But you know, whenever I would ask our teacher if I can use the library, sasabi ng teacher ko, ay wag na uto at baka yan ay masira. <laughs> you know, for those who have been to public schools, uh, you would realize this. Most of our books are all always locked in the closet and uh, in the cabinets. Pang display lang when the district supervisor comes in. Uh, the only, uh, uh, but for us who have been, uh, I learned how to read well, you know, in the most uh, extraordinary place in the, in the town. Not in school, not in the library, but, but in the public market where there is a, uh, where they sell dried fish, yung tuyo. Kasi doon nila, nandun yung mga old magazines, Time Life magazines, National Geographic, as a junk. So, but I believe that, uh, you know, I, when, when, whenever I read those kind of materials, well, of course, I started with comics in Li Wai Wai, uh, Superstar, and all these things. But then my reading materials improved in the fish market when I get to experience Reader's Digest and National Geographic. Uh, but that kind of material, that kind of opportunity to open the mind allowed me to also dream bigger beyond what I see in my community. In my community, I had never known anyone who finished college. 
the uh, highest educational attainment was actually high school. So pagkatapos ng high school, sasabihin ng magulang, anak, tumulong ka na sa pamilya. And usually, it's the eldest who suffers. Um, I'm part of the Board of uh, Trustees of CARD, which is a microfinance group. When we look at the data and research that we had, we realized that uh, it takes about six to ten years to lift a family out of poverty. And this is because simply one of the family members is able to finish college and get employed or start something. Um, so it's very important. So I think as a UP as an institution has a very critical role being the number one state university in the Philippines. You have a very critical role, a very important role in moving our country forward. So let us break down all the silos and be able to open our university to, all, to everyone, to every creative mind, to every dreamer out there. I believe that every human being should have a place to live, a place that is safe for a mother or a father to settle his or her family, a place where one can achieve dreams defined by one's passion and compassion for others. Early this year, we signed a memorandum of agreement for the establishment of a new campus of the University of the Philippines at BCDA's most relevant project for the country's future, the Clark Green City. I have introduced some of our colleagues in UP to the people from MIT and Harvard to push for this collaboration. Um, one thing also that we're looking at is the collaboration with the best institutes in Japan and uh, also so that we could leapfrog our technology and our capability. It truly really warms my heart to be instrumental in enabling UP, my beloved alma mater, which stood as a solid empowering ground for an impoverished young dreamer like me to be the first locator of BCD's global, smart, disaster resilient metropolis. Like the University of the Philippines, my second home. We give premium to the youth and the world that we can build for them and shape for them. BCD also welcomed early this year the Technological University of the Philippines to Clark Green City, which will soon develop the human resource in technical, industrial, technological and professional skills through its engineering and technology education program. Just a few days ago, we signed a, we signed a MOA with the Department of Science and Technology and the Philippine Science High School for the establishment of a super fabrication laboratory at the Clark Green City, which highly complements the BCDA's vision for Clark Green City to promote competitiveness and innovation. The super fabrication laboratory is a technical prototyping platform of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for innovation and invention, which provides stimulus for local entrepreneurship and also a platform for learning and innovation. We have given the Philippine Science High School five hectares of property and 25 million in cash for the establishment of this uh, superfabrication laboratory. The idea here is to be able to provide a playing ground, an innovative ground for any genius out there, not only for the students of the Philippine Science High School, but even for a street child roaming our streets, probably a Filipino genius is out there who has no means, who has no avenue and no forum to, this, to, to test his ideas. So we want to create this open super fabrication laboratory with CNC machines, laser printers, uh, la laser, laser, um, laser cutters, uh, uh, 3D printers, uh, computers, and, and any other high technology. We envision Clark Green City as a place where we could have the best education and institution. Even artists, animators, musicians, engineers, you will have a place there. It's your community where the future generation can immediately be empowered to see himself as a global citizen. This is a brain capital in its truest sense. Through this new metropolis, we hope to shape humanity and the future. This is not just a simple slogan carved out of branding activity to sound good. We seek to be relevant and to respond. We seek to bring to our Filipino, fellow Filipinos a home, a community which they deserve. We embrace and recognize this opportunity to build a city that breeds equality, innovation, security, and inclusion. And we invite enterprises, reputable institutions in the country and over the world to help us do this, to shape humanity in the future. So the way we will do this is first to build the city, 
we have to first build the human capital. And that's why we look at the innovation district as the one that will drive enterprises and technology and will attract capital to move into the city. More than anything else, we want poor people to have a place in the city. Poor people that could hope, that could dream, that could act, that could create, and that could uh, contribute very positively to our society. Um, so I think um, I will never tire of uh, uh, sharing this story because uh, really, I would say, uh, UP has defined me. I am a product of the state university's ability to be able to provide a platform for someone like me who has been, in when, in, when, I, when I was young, has been considered to have no hope. Um, in fact, even my elementary teacher thought I'll never, never pass an entrance exam. Uh, uh, I remember when I asked my teacher, Mom, gusto ko pong mag-exam sa Philippine Science. Uh, sabi sa akin, alay, wag na utoy. At ikaw naman na hindi papasa. Uh, well, that kind of uh, academic elitism somehow marginalized people who are innovative. Uh, because mostly you will see in the public schools, only the top 10 is being encouraged to actually take the upcat, di ba? Uh, but if you're a, if you're a uh, troublemaker in your grade school, you'll never find uh, that opportunity. Palagi po kong bagsak sa isang subject, GMRC. <laughs> because I always ask my teacher questions. So, I hope that uh, you would share this vision because this is actually happening. Um, the way to move forward is to really embrace openness and innovation. The way to also collaborate. Hindi porke UP tayo, tayo ng pinakamagaling. Actually, we believe that excellence is really bringing light or shining brighter when everyone is shining. We cannot be a light in a world filled with darkness. True excellence shines when you are shining so brightly when everyone else is shining brightly as well. That is the only way we could measure our true excellence. So, um, uh, as one of the decision makers of BCDA, we fulfill our tasks with open mind, open eyes, and compassionate heart. We pursue our projects. We know that the kind of space that we should build should be human-centered. We do not just plan structures. We go down to the basics. Quality living is having access to food and being able to produce food for a sustainable future. Quality living is in a living in a community that is safe from the effects of climate change. Quality living is having access to clean water and clean air. We in BCDA take pride at our mandate as we are being given the opportunity to uphold human dignity. Through technology and knowledge sharing, we can bring that dignity and humanity by shaping the physical space people live. To make this world an inclusive, we can make mass transport more efficient, bringing people together with their friends and families. I hope we could share drinks there, we could play music, we could invent things, we could explore the limitless bounds of science and arts and music. We can make this world a sustainable one where we need not worry about food and water and by ensuring that water is utilized efficiently and watersheds managed carefully. Our cities need bridges, rails, roads, and parks. Our world can be made smaller by information technology, not by each individual imprisoning ourselves in our rooms or in our silos, but encouraging us to go out and shake the hand of our friends and hug the people we love. As BCDA builds a supersized city with the intention of promoting further an inclusive kind of growth that will trickle to all people from all walks of life, we shall envision it to be a center for innovation and sustainability for our young, its future presidents, residents, partners, and rest, and rest of our countrymen and women, and the new generation who rec we recognize as global citizens. The world is boundless. The possibilities are limitless. The future holds much promise as the expansion of UP's academic programs on science, technology, music, and the arts in central Luzon, with its 12 million population growing at 2.37%, will drive the economic and human development of Clark Green City 
and will serve as our concrete response to our fellow men and women need for quality yet affordable education. You lang ho, nakikita ko na may capability na ganito. The Clark Green City is the perfect place for the country's premier national university and we are very much excited and ecstatic to propagate the feeling of freedom and self-expression and as a result, breed a new standard of quality living that is adaptable, engaging, modern, progressive, and vibrant. We hope to breed together is a public space that will benefit all, knowledge that brings people together. With UP on board, we have now collectively branded what will be the most modern, sustainable, high-tech, globally connected city as the rising knowledge and innovation capital of the country. This will further promote one of the top investment generating zones, the Clark Freeport Zone. I thank University of the Philippines for seeking to be relevant to generations before me, my generation and to the generation of my children, and starting this knowledge festival for our countrymen and women for a vibrant future. To the youth, it must not escape you that you are here because you have the ability to change things. Despite life's failures and challenges, we can persevere after all. This is the new Philippines. We are the new Filipinos. Before I end, let me just, let me just uh, think about, uh, let us, uh, let, let me welcome you to think about this. As we all continue to carry on with our businesses, with our professions, whether it be great infrastructure, a new metropolis, or modern technology, let the foundation of everything we do be laid about the magnificent love for humanity and our country. Let us recognize the fact that we are all in the position to shape lives. Let us try to recognize the freedom of our fellow men and women to dream and to hope. There is no force as strong as hope in this world. When we plant the seed of hope in a young hopeless person, you actually provide a gate an opportunity for him to recover and to achieve again his self-esteem, his self-respect, and his own capability to innovate and to create. Social innovation is the key and is the perfect solution to recognizing human dignity. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa University of the Philippines. I will never tire of propagating this idea because I myself have been a product of this institution, the institution that shaped me, the institution that brought me to where I am now, the institution that I would find to be the perfect platform to again lift others up. It is a time to share, it is a time to reach out to those in the margins of the society. If we are truly the University of the Philippines, that we must, we must be able to accomplish our mission to lift the entire country forward by reaching out to those who are in the margins of our country. Maraming maraming salamat po.